Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on April 26, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at world weather. Starting out here, looking at the last 48 hours on our sun, as we had no major solar flares thwarted our way, nor CMEs to talk about as of late. But there was one the last couple days. See me heading our way, looking at the last 48 hours incoming. We do have six sun or seven sunspot regions across the sun. Got some intense cresting activity here. Large plasma filament eruption off the right hand side there as well. Plasma filaments just racing across the northern hemisphere right now. Going to be keeping an eye on that. Looking at outgoing here. Same thing, plasma filaments, left-hand side, ejecting away. And closer look here at cresting energy. Sunspot region turning in and watching that large plasma filament erect and eject from our sun. Twisting and turning away. And look at that plasma filament under that sunspot. Looking at multi-spectrum here, two of the most major events. Plasma filament eruption, Southern Hemisphere and Northern Hemisphere. Amongst the seven sunspots on the Earth-facing sun. We also have Equatorial Region Coronal Hole. And one building in the north and one turning away in the south. Solar wind speeds remain above 500 kilometers per second and have for the past three or four days since we were impacted by that extreme geomagnetic storm from the M-class solar flare. Earth-facing position was a massive event and created a spectacle across both hemispheres, across the world. Have a look there at all of these sunspot regions that are active right now as we have seven. Some amazing images here. Solar Dynamics Observatory observing solar cycle 25. Amazing stuff. Space weather conditions remain low. Solar wind speeds right now 585 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux is in B range right now and has been for the last couple of days. A couple of minor C-class solar flares to talk about. Solar proton flux has gone back into a normal range. Geomagnetic activity is sitting at a KP4 and is showing there KP of 8 just two, three days ago. Having a look at the ASWA space prediction spiral, we do have the CME taking off from our sun. Expected arrival 27th, so tomorrow and into the 28th. Expecting a space weather event. And as well, showing the outgoing CME taking off towards Venus. Other than that, no major solar events thwarted our way. Let's have a look at Alaska 2, showing the last two days of events on our sun. Coronal mass ejection from the southern hemisphere. That is the one that we are going to be hit with tomorrow. As well, notable there in the northwest region. Plasma filament eruption creating a large CME not in an earth-facing direction, but another close look at it right here, as that was a very dense and large coronal mass ejection. Heads up, stay tuned with daily events worldwide. Having a look at the real-time solar wind, right now we're sitting at about 580 kilometers per second. This is showing the last seven days of solar winds from the impact date of the M-class solar flare where we were hit with 746 kilometer per second solar winds. And just recently, Magnetosphere are show, is showing an impact just in the last few frames there. Looking at earthquakes here for the past 24 hours, sitting at about 300 earthquakes according to USGS. We're gonna start out here with the most recent in Paraman, Indonesia, 5.1 magnitude. As well, just north there in Indonesia, 4.6, 5.7 earthquake here reported 
Mid-Indian Ridge, Somalia Plate, 5.1 earthquake here in Greece, 120 kilometer depth, as well as 4.0 in Turkey, as they are still dealing with a lot of shakers. Scotia Plate, 4.8 earthquake, South Sandwich Islands reported yesterday. South American Plate, very quiet, only reporting the 4.6 and the 4.1. Same with Central America, way too quiet. Overlooking North America, largest through the region. Seeing some earthquakes here, White City, New Mexico as well, 3.6 banning California. And a notable here, 3.5 in Chalice, Idaho, 14 kilometer depth. Hawaii has seen some increased activity as well, right atop of Mauna Loa. So heads up, could see an eruption here soon. Alaska seeing an uptick in seismicity as well. 5.0 earthquake here in Kursk, Russia, as well as 4.6 Kuril Islands. 4.5 there in Guam. And then minor fours across Papua New Guinea and eastward to Fiji, where it's been quiet. New Zealand, though, reporting a 5.4 and a 5.2. North Island, pretty sizable earthquakes for that super volcano, Tapo. Having a look here at the last seven days for shakers across the planet, largest being Fiji region and as well Indonesia, both 7.1 earthquakes. But it's been quiet here the past 24 hours for deep earthquakes in the Fiji region, expecting something to come here. Across the world, no major earthquakes to report today, nor swarms. But definitely keeping an eye on South America and up into Central America, North American plate into the Cascades, still. Let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent satellite imagery and as well, noting out the most recent volcanoes getting updated. No new volcanoes to talk about that have been awakened. Let's have a look through the list here, looking at Ibu in Indonesia. Amongst all these flood alerts, wow, 203 active hazards. Looking at Sabancaya in Peru, tornado warnings through Texas, Fuego, Guatemala, Popo in Mexico, Semeru in Indonesia, Sangay in Ecuador, Nevadas de Ruiz, Colombia, as well as Swiss and Ajima in Japan, all in the last 10 hours, Dokono in Indonesia. So that's about 11 volcanoes getting updated today amongst the 49 that are active and erupting across the world. Give you a quick look here at satellite imagery across the planet. Some pretty strong low pressure systems in both the North Atlantic and North Pacific right now. No cyclones or typhoons or hurricanes to talk about. Lots of moisture heading across Central Africa this week, as well through southern parts of India. As well, Europe, seeing some abnorm abnormal temperatures and as well, Lots of moisture this week. Low pressure systems coming in over the United Kingdom. Having a look at temperatures here, brought to you by windy.com, overlooking North America and Europe. As a cool down is expected here to last for the next little bit, high pressure ridge over North America, Pacific Northwest going to keep things cool. And as well, a low moving southward from the Hudson Bay, going to cool things down in the long range. But we're still sitting at seasonal temperatures across eastern parts of Canada. Watch for things to warm up western Canada in the long-range forecast. Having a look at precipitation, as we do have a Colorado low and as well three lows across Canada to track this week. The low-pressure system through Colorado is set to bring extreme weather here Thursday into Friday across southeastern United States and up into the northeast Definitely going to see some coastal action there as well. Extreme weather through the Gulf states Saturday into Sunday with another low as that tracks northeastward. 
and then mixes with a cold high pressure ridge north of it. We could see some flurry action through Ontario, parts of eastern Canada and the United States, but drying out in the long range forecast, high pressure ridges moving in. Overlooking South America, heavy daily evaporation rains this week. As well, a very strong system here about to penetrate the coastline of Argentina and Chile. So extreme weather will be prevalent here the next two or three days across Chile and Argentina with this strong low. Overlooking Africa. Watching for heavy rains through central and eastern parts through Somalia this week. As well, low pressure system coming into the United Kingdom Saturday into Sunday. And that is set to scoot southward into the Mediterranean. Other than that, no major systems, hurricanes or cyclones to talk about in this long range forecast. But we do have an interesting system heading towards New Zealand. Looking at this low tracking southward from Fiji. Looks like it could make landfall there Saturday into Sunday. But high pressure ridge east of New Zealand is going to diminish that. As well, atmospheric river of moisture heading up into Alaska this week. Two low pressure systems and then another one on the way. Also wanted to share with you here the SO2 models as we still have tons of that SO2 from Shevelich Volcano all across the Northern Hemisphere right now. I mean, where is it to go? It is literally encircling, encompassing the Northern Hemisphere. Europe right now getting a higher concentration of SO2 with these next few systems coming in. So air quality advisories should be in effect. Clearing out through Canada and the United States, as in the long range, high pressure ridges will be moving in and warmer temperatures. But we've still got eruptions coming off of Kamchatka and as well through Alaska. Sizable SO2 amounts coming from South America as well. Peru area. Much love, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.